Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And in this video, I wanted to talk more about lending. Specifically, I wanted to go through this in a bit more detail, but with numbers. So I have a spreadsheet here that kind of like mocks up lending based off the current design. And I'm going to be going through this one in order to try and teach exactly how lending works in a bit more detail, as well as the effect that some of the network settings have. So I've got a bit of a, a legend here with different colors, and I'm going to start with um, some of these network, the Mimir settings that, that are going to be set. Now, I've got no idea what they're going to be, so I've, I've made a bit of a guess here. So if we have the lending lever at 33%, the minimum max CR here we have, and then we have the max supply, and obviously that won't change. Then we have the native rune supply, and I got that off this endpoint, and that's about accurate. Then we have the burnt rune. So that's about 13.9. I said about 15 million buffer rune. It was about 13.9 million when you work out the exact numbers. Uh, so that's what we've got here. I've also got the um, BDC uh, rune and Ethereum depth, because I, I need them to work out some stuff as well. So that's, that's the network settings as well as the network data that I've managed to go on the 6th of June. I've got some random um, prices here. It doesn't really matter what that is. Uh, I want to talk through how I've managed to get some numbers. So the first one you need to work out is the total rune available for the protocol. So this is the, the limit of rune that can be used for collateral, and that's the rune only. When we find out the value of that, we essentially times that by the rune price. So we're going to get about 9 million. If that was one, it will be this. If that was $1.50. So this caps the collateral value that can be accepted by the network. Now that's distributed based off the active pool. So if you just had the BDC and the um, Ethereum pool active, it's distributed proportionally. So essentially, out of the total depths, when you add these two bull depths together and you find out the percentage, 68% is of the BDC and 31% is for the um, or amount of, you could say that total is going to go to the, um, the Ethereum pool. So that's how you get these two numbers here. And when you, this is in a rune only, when you times that by the rune price, you get these numbers here. So that plus that is going to equal um, this number up here. And again, that's based off the rune price. So it's a dollar oh eight, I think, when I looked at it. So that's the type of um, cap. And then if we change the if we change the lending lever, that that obviously reduces that. If we make that higher, then obviously that increases that, even though everything else is the same. Right. So that's what hit we're going. That's what's happening here with regards to the the caps of collateral that can be accepted. And that's the top of the collateralization range here. So when we think about that range up and down here, um, we're thinking about this one here. And again, if I change the price to $5, that increases the range here. It's a lot more to move. So the lower the price of rune, the, the less ranges that that is gonna have. So then if we were to um, have say a 20, one, two, three. So if we would have a debt of 20,000, which is one BDC in my little example, then we're going to know that the collateralization ratio is 302%, which you're thinking, well, why is that? And that's even though the, the min collateralization is 300, that's because when it works it out, it takes, it takes into consideration existing collateral, which obviously would be zero if this is the first line, as well as the collateral given. So that's going to move it up there because it's, it's saying, well, the collateralization ratio for uh, $20,000 um, is taking that into consideration. So if this was say 100,000, then obviously you're gonna get a higher collateralization ratio, even though it's the first loan. And that would obviously move all the way up from 300 to 1,000. If um, uh, this was about 6 million, then it would be uh, nearly all the way to the top there. So that moves. If I change the range to say 400, the min CR to 400, then obviously it's gonna move it up a little bit higher because this range is squeezed. If I move it down to uh, 200, then obviously it's a much better range. And um, you know, towards the top, you're gonna to get a bit more debt out just by manipulating uh, these. And if you change the lending lever to 20, you'll see that um, well, the collateral, the actual range, the top range decreases here as well. So you've got to have that at like 3 million or something for that back under. 
as we start, we can move this collateralization ratio from say 20 to 33 to 10, we can move it up and down just by changing the lending lever. This is going over a thousand percent because the collateral given is higher than the top. But if we want to say 50, then 70, you can see we're dropping it, even though that's like nothing else is changing. So this is really interesting here to using the lending lever in order to change the collateralization ratio. And we can also use the current um, the current collateral in the pool, obviously. So if we had a $500,000 that was outstanding, that's obviously going to change the collateralization ratio for this particular loan. If I make it equal here and I give this perhaps a bit of a realistic number, then I can move this up and down just by using the... Um, the, the amount of existing collateral. So if I said perhaps not 5 million, we can see here I'm changing the collateralization ratio just by how much um, is already in the pool. Now, uh, it's got to obviously be less than the cap, which is here. So I could probably make this 1.7 million and then you'll see the collateralization ratio goes to a little bit higher here as well. This is what's interesting is that the collateralization ratio, whilst it e increases the amount of rune um, here, that as as far as the cap also increases because the amount of burnt rune increases as well. So we're working out how much burnt rune is being being done here as well. So I'm going to move that to 33, so it's more of a realistic figure. Um, so the more rune that is burnt. Well, the more loan is taken out, the more runes that burnt, which means the higher this cap is depending on the price. So this could go all the way up. Let's make this to say six, 6 million. Sorry, six point is going is going to be fine. So you can see that starts to go up to seven, seven million, seven point eight, and I could move this, but it, it starts to get to diminishing returns because the the more you move up, you're only taking thirty three percent of the burnt root. Um, so it does, I've played with this before, it does get to a point where you can only do so much more before it kind of starts to peter out. Um, I don't know where that top part is for any given figures, but you can see now we've only got, what now, 11,000 rune, the more I've pushed it up. Obviously that's going to change if the lending lever changes or the price of rune moves to, say, $5 as well. So these are the type of factors here you want to understand. So the lending lever, the minimax CR, the price of rune, as well as how much debt has already been taken out, all have an effect on the collateralization ratio when, um, as far as moving it up and down the range or defining the top and the bottom of that particular range and where it is within that current range. So I want to do a lending example so we can understand this a bit better. So we've just got some made up prices here. And we have our BDC ratio or our pool ratio at 10,000. So that's saying, how many rune do we need to buy one BDC? So let's say should we deposit one Bitcoin worth of collateral, one Bitcoin of collateral. So we have a collateral value of 20,000 and we know that we need to burn 10,000 rune for that collateral in order to hold that collateral to be we burn that to create the derived asset. If we use this as a bit of a map, that's the one BDC in, and then we're saying, well, how much do we need to burn uh, in order to create the derived asset, the derived Bitcoin here? So it's 10,000 in this situation. We've got the collateralization ratio at 302. Obviously it's taking into account the collateral value here and there's no loans. If we were to have say 100,000 then obviously that'd be a bit higher. And obviously the higher that goes, the higher this is gonna go. Just keep it at zero for simplistic uh, values. Then we have the, the rune required in order to create the tour, because rune is minted to create tour. So that's this part here. So we need about 3,309. And for any loan, because of the collateralization ratio, this number, the, the amount burnt is always going to be more than what is actually minted in order to create the tour. So we're saying how much is burnt versus uh, minted on the loan open in its entirety. So then we work out, well, what's what's the net of that? 6,691 rune is going to be burnt when the loan opens. 
So let's have a look at, say, the price went up um, 10% and like for, for both assets, what happens? So here we have the asset ratio is the same. Uh, that was kind of deliberate. And then we have the repayment. So we've repaid uh, basically exactly the same debt. So what we're saying here is that we haven't incurred any of these slips. There's no slip fees. Of course, there would be, and room would be burnt in those slip fees, but we just kind of like not, uh, not including that for the moment. So the amount of room that needs to be burnt for the tour is this much here, which is we we're saying room needs to get burnt in order to create the tour here. And then in order to release the collateral, we're going to need to mint some room. So that's this mint here. So then we, we can find out the net between these two here as well. So we're saying that about 6,992 uh, rune is minted in order to close the loan when we, when we work out those two figures here. And what we're really interested in when we compare those two is, you know, obviously this one and this one for the um, rune minted to create the tour and then the rune burnt in order to um, remove the tool, remove the debt, and then the collateral here, here. So the rune burnt for the collateral here. That gives us a net position for both loan and open of 301. So that's being created. Even though the collateral actually hasn't moved at all, it's because of the tour. And this is kind of interesting. So when the rune price increases, this number is going to be more than that number. If we were to change this to say 2.3, then you can say we've kind of broken even. So this is this little formula works out what the room price needs to be moving to in order for this to kind of be breaking even. I can't get it zero, <laughs> not that good of a formula, but I can get it pretty close. So the more room goes up, the better it is, the more room. So if we say 2.5, the better it is for the protocol. The more room goes down to say this stays at two, um, the worse it is for the protocol. Now, conversely, if, if BDC goes up a little bit more, 2,500, I'm oh, sorry, 25,000, then obviously it's going to get worse. It's going to want the rune price to be moving up with it. So 2.75. So the more that the BDC price goes up and rune doesn't go, then, then the worse it is. But obviously this went to 25, one, two, three, or if this stays at 20,000 and um, the, the room price shoots up, then obviously that's better for the network. So it's really this, this price, this asset ratio, the, the better, the closer this is to the start asset ratio, the more it's going to break even. And the lower this is, the better it is for the network, the higher this is. So if this goes over, um, 10,000, then the worse it is. So maybe so the worse it is for the network. Obviously the idea is that rune will because there's a demand for room because you know if we take out 10 loans as an example all this gets taken out of supply so there's going to be a more of a demand for rune and it's got to come from somewhere eg the exchanges and stuff like that so the price rises because there's there's more buy pressure on rune that's the idea right so let's have a look at some more extreme situations so if this went to if we took out loans now so 20, about 27,000, about 1.08, last time I checked. And just so we take out two BDC. And we're gonna pay this back in the next pool. And say there, you can see that, oh, actually, that's gonna be quite good for the network. I mean, if, if room was $12 and Bitcoin was half a million, that wouldn't actually be that bad for the network. So this is some extreme situations. And then if we, if we were to flip that, so we say, um, uh, let's take about 60, 12, uh, $12. And then we go, um, if you were to take out a loan in the bull and then redeem it now, it's not that bad for the network, given the collateralization ratio. And this collateralization ratio is a bit, a bit low because if we were to say 50, okay, 50, 50 BDC, you can see what the impact it's gonna have on the network. All right, let's let's make a bad situation for room. And you know, if we were to say this only went to two dollars, you can see where what's that minting two and a half thousand between when we account for the open and the close. 
But what we need to understand is if we did this, say, 50 times, obviously that's that's actually works out pretty good for the protocol when you when you think about it because the collateralization ratio is so high that increases the collateralization ratio because essentially this is going to be um, the collateral value is going to be up here. So what do I mean by that? If we were to go put one million in here, one million in here, one, that's the type of situation you're going to be getting for that loan with these particular prices, if that makes sense. So it's 409 because you've got a million dollars already um, inside of the particular pool as collateral. That so if I make that plus my cap uh, nine, if I make that three, you can see it actually doesn't change it. it increases the collateralization ratio, but it doesn't change it. That's because of the the, the tour minting. That's why. Interesting mechanics here. As you can see here, we're minting more room through the loan life cycle. That's purely because of the tour. So when we start comparing these numbers. Now this number, I'm just forget the minus, is generally going to be lower than this number when the rune price increases. So if it was to increase a lot more, then whilst this number is still getting lower, you're having the benefit because of the collateralization ratio here. So what I'm saying is because this and this is the same, there's no benefit or we say affect these two cancel each other out when the collateralization ratio changes in favor for um for rune then in other words this number is less than that number then that's when you start to see the collateral the collateral um, burning and then minting being favorable for, to the network if this was to say at i don't know three dollars then this number is now higher than that number so that's why it is a negative for the network so the, there's two factors really to pay attention to it's obviously how these two work against each other which is based off the pool asset ratio and then um this one which is based off the price of the room in order to to, to burn or to mint tour right that's a lot of technical information um, I hope you found that useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be making this spreadsheet available um, and posting that or tweeting that out. So you can go ahead and play with this yourself and to put different scenarios in and play with you know, the figures here on open and close as well as the, the network settings. So you can see what difference it makes. Because obviously, if we start off with 829 and I change the, the, the um, min CR, then also that has an effect on the actual minting and burning of room. In fact, all of these will affect that I talked about previously, this number as well. The more conservative, the less this will be, the more aggressive, the more this could be. So everything, it's all kind of intertwined. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Till next time, bye.